in the years it, it has grown to a more or less permanent culture because all kind of other aspects of the society are also uh, yeah, developed in the permaculture way. So for instance, a building, uh, a house building or a, a water supply or all, all kind of other things that are needed uh, for society are also uh, developed in this permanent, let's say, way. So that's the first view of how to, to address permaculture. The next view is uh, what, what the goal of permaculture is. So some people think, yeah, it's important to know what, why you're doing stuff. So, and that's, uh, so the goal is uh, that you uh, try to uh, make nature and people uh, cooperate. And in that way that both of them survive in the long term. So that would be like the goal uh, of permaculture. Um, okay, another view is what are you actually making? So what you're making is you're making a functional ecosystem. So the, that's an ecosystem uh, where the people involved are part of the ecosystem and the ecosystem has also a function for this, these people. So the function can be uh, yeah, let's say a food production, wood production, water cleaning, uh, prevent fires, so make a wood in that way that the, doesn't sp the fire doesn't spread that hard and these kind of things. So you, have, you really uh, you, you address uh, the, the, the ecosystem in that way that it has a function for the people that use it. Okay, the next view is, is that permaculture is a design system. It's like a toolbox that has different tools in it uh, which you can use uh, f yeah, for that goal, for that function. So there are different, uh, let's say, concepts, a way of to analyze uh, the system, uh, and there are different solutions, like techniques, how to implement uh, permaculture. So, for instance, uh, you can see an ecosystem as a system which has seven layers, from very big uh, uh, trees to uh, the smaller trees, to the bushes, to the, like say, the, the herbs. And then you have like the, the, the plants that cover the soil. And then you have the plants that go into the soil, that, so you eat the roots of it, or the, the roots of them are functional. Or you have, and you have the seventh one is that you have plants that grow into the trees. So that's like a way of analyzing this ecosystem. So what kind of plants are there available on <coughs> what layers? So that's an example of one of the analyzers. So, and the next uh, vision on, on permaculture is, is that it uh, has its a philosophy. So the philosophy consists of uh, three ethical principles. That is, uh, take care of the earth, take care of the people, and fair share. So that uh, there has to be balance between the people and between the people and the nature, so that everybody gets the part it deserves. Uh, okay, and the sixth view is like, how did it uh, develop? How did it originate? It? So that they people think it's important to know why or who uh, origin uh, developed it. So it's. Uh, developed in the 70s by Bill Mollison and David Holmgren. They were working on the University of Tasmania, that's uh, the island south of Australia. And what they s saw in Australia is that uh, the agriculture system was really destroying the whole land. So there, were, there was an agriculture system that uh, was only monocultures with very big yeah, pieces of land that uh, were used and they uh, used, this, used this land in that way that the soil uh, really broke down, it deteriorated. And the, the, the consequence was that um, the, all the, uh, like the water evaporated very easily and stuff, so it became sandy and salty, and in, 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 in a certain moment it was just not usable for anything anymore. <coughs> And they thought, okay, we could do this in a different way, or if you continue it in this way, yeah, there won't be food anymore. So that's the, the beginning of thinking about permaculture. That's what's happening now. The desert is growing, the growing, growing. We've got the trees of the rainforest, and then and, and it 
and that like the usable land go yeah, declines. Yeah, yeah. This, this is also true. Mm. Uh, and the greater, yes, I agree with you as well. Uh, but for instance, in Holland, right? Mm -hmm. You have 70 million people. You have almost no space for growing anything. Mm -hmm. So local, locally, you know, in the garden, but you know, people live in the flats. Yeah. Well, yeah. Ca like, let's say uh, there is a lot of research about how, uh, which part of the food can be grown locally, right? That's, I think, your question. Um, well. There is there is one thing into to take into account that not everything what we eat can be grown here. So if you still want to have coffee or chocolate or something, it has to be coming from abroad. So let's say um, uh, like okay, there's an example uh, in London. They have uh, a strategy strategy <coughs> to localize the food more. So. What you can do is in the city, you can every green plot you can use to grow food and stuff. And let's say, I don't know the exact figures, but about 20% can be really grown into the city. And then another 20% can be grown in an area of 50 kilometers around the city, something like that. And then another 20% can be at least grown in the, in the, in the country. And then another 20% can be grown in Europe, and the last 20% can be coming from the rest of the world. Something like that would be way better than now the cases. Because in Holland, we, what we grow, we mainly export, and what we eat, we mainly import. So, it's like people living in Amsterdam, they work in Utrecht, another way around. Yeah, <laughs> for instance, yeah. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I also heard that Holland is the biggest vegetable exporting country in Europe. That's what I heard too. Yeah. Someone was asking about you know, feeding uh, the world's population or you know, how accessible, how can we do it? And I think one of the, the keys is trying to bring more uh, growing food in the cities, um, doing it like vertically on walls or on terraces, in parks, in green spaces, basically being creative. So there's quite a few different projects uh, in Amsterdam and especially in Oost around this area. <coughs> and uh, the idea of doing having a permaculture garden here came up uh, not so long ago. And with a group of people, um, we've been working with designing, uh, or starting to design the space here at the Valley. So um, initially the steps um, of designing, you go through, of course, you need to get to know uh, your piece of land. And the first time you access it, it's a question about just observing and having just the neutral impression of what, what is this land giving you. So in permaculture, it's important that you have the, that the elements that you use, like the vegetable garden or uh, like the trees uh, or uh, the and pond or uh, you know the compost heap, that they are in the right place. So they they get that you get maximum benefit of them. For instance, they some need to be in the sun or out of the wind, and that these elements help each other the best way. So, uh, like, if you have a field of flowers, it's good to have the, the beehive next to it because the, the, the beehive gets the nectar and flowers get the uh, pollution. Pollination. Pollination. That one. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and um, for instance, if you have a, a vegetable garden, it's good to have the, the water. Uh, Bin, how do you call it? The rain bin. Yeah, that it's nearby, so that you can easily water the garden and these kind of things. So, and to uh, to develop this thinking or to play with this, uh, we Jasper and I are developing a permaculture card game, um, and uh, and the idea now is is that a few of us here just play it and we explain and then explain why they do things and then we can all learn from it.